Hey, what's hoppin' new friendos? Troy here with the Tropical Garage and I'm back with another vivarium tutorial. In this video, we're going to be doing a vivarium with a water feature. Really excited for the way this one turned out, so stay tuned and enjoy the video. Also, for those of you that aren't following me on Instagram, you probably should. So head on over to Instagram and follow me at Ufraga Histroyonica. Now, let's get on with this build. Alright guys, I went ahead and skipped a few steps that you guys have seen in previous videos of just me doing the uh, great stuff in the background and also attaching the Hygrolon to the great stuff. If you haven't seen that video, here's a thumbnail uh, to a video on my channel. You can go there and watch that video and you'll see everything. Um, this portion here is more about the water feature. Getting into that, the drainage layer that I'm using is actually a Aquanite sponge filter pad. Uh, what you're seeing here is the fine grade. I do not recommend this. Water does not percolate through it easily uh, or nearly as easily as the medium grade, which you'll see I end up switching out to later on in the video. The pump I'm using is actually a uh, Kedsum 80 gallons per hour submersible pump I get off Amazon. You can see here how small the pump is. Uh, and you just cut a hole for it to fit inside of the uh, sponge filter media. And I've used some Mist King fittings to uh, make this work, if you will. It's not exactly pretty or perfect, but um, it gets the job done in this application. Um, and then I just poked the tube or the outlet line right through the Great Stuff foam. And then I put some more Great Stuff over top of it to keep it in place. Um, and uh, this sponge filter mat there, I'm just using to kind of disperse the water or distribute it more evenly. So it's not just an even stream coming down that piece of wood. But uh, I'm really liking the look of this. It's got a, uh, you know, it does have some trickling effect. It's got some drippage going on on the front of the piece and as well in the back of the piece, which I think is going to be a really cool effect. In order to run the wire through the screen up top, you are going to need to clip the plug. So go ahead and do so. I'm also going to show you how I hide the wire from the pump. Just going to take your standard razor blade and slice right into the sponge filter mat and the wire just fits down inside of it and is completely concealed on the ground area. And just like that you push the wire directly into the little groove and it completely conceals and you're good to go on to the next step. And voila! We're good to move on. In order to go through the screen up top with the wire, you need to use something to poke through. I just so happened to use a blue pen I had laying around, and now we're going to put the wire into place. The next step is we're going to do some Gorilla Glue Super Glue Gel along the back side of that wire and just press it firmly right into the Hygrolon so it stays nice and tight. And here you can see I've gone ahead and reattached the plug to the wire and plugged it in. We are up and running and the wire is completely concealed on the terrestrial land side and I do have the wire super glued now. As you can see it's not flailing around like a flag in the wind and uh, we're looking good so far. Uh, again I use the Gorilla Glue super glue gel and now we're going to begin doing the hardscaping process. As you can see I already had a couple pieces uh, hardscaped into the background and for the water feature but I wanted to show you guys how I do this process. Um, it is tedious and definitely takes practice and you're going to be tinkering with pieces of wood and duct tape getting them propped up with the filter sponge media um, until you get it just right. Now I'm using a newer wood. I've, I've used a couple pieces of it before in some of my builds but uh, not primarily as the main uh, pieces. This is uh, manzanita wood. And that's popular wood. I know a lot of people use it. I just personally have never really used it before, but um, I wanted to try it on this build. I got all the wood from the Manzanita Dude or the Manzanita store on Facebook. Um, he's really reasonable and he's got uh, fast shipping, really cool pieces of wood. And I mean, he's got pretty much any size you could ever imagine or want or need. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy I did so because I think the, uh, I think it came out great. And you guys will see here in the, uh, later on in the video but I do think that the the overall scape is really interesting and I think it's gonna work out perfectly for the frogs I have planned but uh, as you can see here I'm just really 
trying to prop this piece of wood up with some filter sponge media and uh, I've got duct tape you know kind of securing it where it can protrude out but not flop around everywhere uh, and once you've got it where you want it the next step is to start foaming and as you guys have seen in many of my previous builds I'm gonna start using the great stuff foam I use the window and door it's the blue can um, it expands pretty good for me I get and I get less um, big air bubbles in it so this is the stuff I use now it may work out differently for you but personally this is the can that I use and um, basically I'm just filling any gaps where um, you know I could find you know pretty much secure points for the wood um, so they stay in place and you know it's fine if they've got a little play or a little give um, but you know as long as they're implanted in place they really shouldn't shouldn't move um, you know it's not like they're going to be holding heavy animals or uh, you know certain pieces or branches that are more flimsy than others that, that do move around a little more you know I'm not going to be using those to to support large bromeliads or anything like that I'd put the large bromeliads on ones that are really secure and really firm you're just going to want to repeat the process on the other side and uh, with any other pieces that you want or find interesting um, just kind of find all kinds of creative ways to tape them up and get them set into place and uh, once you've got it in the desired location and you like the angle and you like the look of it step back and take a look and if everything looks good from afar then uh, get out the old handy dandy can of great stuff and start locking everything down And this is with the background completely foamed. I'm gonna let this cure, and uh, then we'll get into the carving process, which you're gonna see here next. So instead of using a tool or anything like that, I just use my actual fingers and just kind of pull it apart. Um, I'm looking to get like a natural looking muddy clay, rocky type of texture. Um, so I really don't use the blade unless uh, when I'm pulling it, it's starting to pull off the background or something like that, then I'll, I'll use the blade to kind of make it, um, come up and come off a little easier in certain spots. But for the most part, I'm completely carving all the foam here, uh, by hand. You can see like here, this is kind of a delicate piece that's, you know, kind of protruding out and doesn't have a lot of, um, support. So I didn't want to pull off a lot of that foam. And uh, as you can see here, I'm just doing the same stuff. I carve around here just to make it, um, if I'm like trying to make it look or take down some of the mass, I guess, um, sometimes I will carve. And this is the hardscape <laughs> completely foamed. I excuse my son making lots of noise, but uh, I've got everything carved here. And uh, this is going to give it a pretty good look of how it's going to look, but uh, this is after I add in the medium grade sponge filter mat. As you can see, I kind of did a little bit more foaming just around where the foam meets the wood. And I didn't want to have any gaps or cracks where the frogs could potentially get trapped under there. Uh, as for the actual sponge filter pad itself, um, I just carved it with the snap blades. As you can see, it's like a hot knife going through butter and it carves really easily and it's really easy to manipulate levels and certain gradients. Um, I'm really happy with this and I really do recommend everybody to try it out. Also, I'm sure you guys are wondering about these weird looking vine things that are covered in Hygrolon. Um, they're actually these 3D uh, Hygrolon tubes that you can get at glassboxtropicals.com. Um, this is my first time using them, but I'm excited to use them. Um, you can manipulate them in any shape or form you want. Um, you can twist them, bend them, um, you know, you could hide wires through them because they are hollowed out. Um, you know, they're, they're really cool products. Like I said, I've never used it before, but um, it's going to promote plant growth really well with all the water wicking ability. If I was you guys, I would head over to glassboxtropicals.com and get them while you still can. 
I also um, cut back the outlet port quite a bit. I used a lighter to kind of melt it or make it malleable and until uh, I got it in the angle that I wanted and then I splashed cold water on it to kind of lock it into place. And the next process is what you guys have seen me do before with the UGL dry lock and the original form and then also the Quickcrete color, uh, cement color. I used buff and I also used charcoal on this build. And all I can really tell you about applying this is um, don't be scared and just kind of just kind of throw a bunch of dry lock and color on there. You can blend it right on the foam as you can see that's what I'm doing for the most part. Um, just putting you know the buff with the gray dry lock on and then I'll put splashes of charcoal on it and kind of blend it and just go back and forth until you get the desired color that you like. Um, it doesn't have to be very detailed if you don't want it to, but it will look better when you have, uh, you know, not such a universal color and just kind of have back and forth, different shades, different tones. Um, you'll have a better overall aesthetic. And here's a completed look of the foam covered in the dry lock. As you can see, it just gives it a pretty natural look. Um, I didn't get super crazy with the color, but I did pay attention to kind of blending the color into the the actual hygrolon. Um, I kind of match that grayish brownish color. Uh, so I think it looks pretty good. And um, like I said, I mean, this is just your base. So uh, it's going to look much better after plants and everything are on there. But I do think this creates a very uh, nice aesthetic for your uh, base for your hardscape. And now we've had a couple days for it to cure. So I went ahead and added the water and uh, Give a little test run of the water feature and uh, I added some java moss, some rickia moss and uh, you can see I just kind of covered the, the porthole with some rickia to disperse the water in more of a natural flow pattern. I got the little drippage going on back here um, and this little puddle creekish type of thing and then this little creek pond area in the front. Um, I think it's going to look really, really good when it's all planted. And you can see how far the foam sticks up out of the water line. Um, that water level will never get higher than that. I have it maxed out right now. It's about only less, it's a little less than an inch of water. So, you know, the, the moss and if you did substrate, it wouldn't be soaked all the time. Uh, the nice thing about not doing substrate here is that it's not going to turn your water brown. Okay, I just received my order from Michael's Bromeliads. And that was a new Regilia Malibu. And this is a Vrigia Fenestralis from another tank. Um, I ended up removing it in the final scape, but I did want to show you guys uh, the difference between the Vrigia and the Nia Regilia. As you see there, the Nia Regilia has that stolen, and the Vrigia doesn't. The Vrigia just has a, a pretty elaborate root system, which you kind of need to take to your advantage when planting it. Um, I ended up removing this bromeliad in the final um, bromeliad layout. But I did want to show you guys the process of how you can mount these easily to any sort of driftwood or like I said this is manzanita wood but um, you just kind of set the roots around the piece of wood to keep it in place um, you know where it's kind of standing up right and then you literally just take a zip tie and uh, just clip it into place and you're good to go um, it'll keep it keep it very tight and uh, sturdy and when it's filled with water it's not going to tip over um, and then the roots, like I say, on these Varigia, they get pretty elaborate, so the bromeliads really won't move anywhere. I just want to show you guys a method of planting Neo Regilia onto driftwood rather than drilling a hole into it. Um, you can literally just super glue um, the actual stolen and part of the base of the plant to the wood. Um, just super glue some sphagnum down and then super glue the plant to the sphagnum and then you can cover more with sphagnum or live moss or whatever you want but it's a really easy and neat application. You can also drill right into the driftwood to make a hole so you can shove the stolen right into the hole. Um, I don't end up keeping this portion of my layout but I did attempt it and try it uh, to see how it looked and it looked okay but um, I decided it wasn't worth uh, keeping so you just drill a hole right into the wood uh, check to see if the stolen fits in and I saw my angle was way off so I did kind of change the angle a bit of the hole so it would sit there correctly um, but I still did not like the overall look so I didn't keep it but the last method that I use is literally the easiest you just 
carve an X into the Hydra lawn and then shove the stolen right into the background. Um, sometimes you do need to use uh, toothpicks or paper clips or something to keep the bromeliad propped up when it gets full of water and has some weight to it. Okay, and this is with all five of the Neoregia Malibu mounted in place. As you can see, I removed the Vregia Fenestralis. It just blocked too much of the hardscape. Um, so this is how I have it, or I had it um, originally. And um, I wanted to show you guys the multiple applications of you know, applying the bromeliads. But uh, a couple tips is I usually try to plant bromeliads in either uh, odd numbers of either three, five, or seven. Um, so this, I have five, but um, like I said, I think it's a little busy, so it's probably gonna change. And you can see here, uh, the only bromeliad that stayed from the initial layout was the one on the left. Um, the one that's now on the right was originally super glued to that center piece of wood, and I thought it looked better over on the right. Um, I think the background looks a little more open and this, the hardscape shines through a little better. Okay, you can now see that the third bromeliad has been added and I ended up adding another piece of the manzanita wood. Um, I didn't great stuff it into place or anything like that. I just leaned it up against the background and I thought this piece of wood just fit the overall hardscape pretty well and it didn't actually cover up that uh, center piece of driftwood. So yeah, as of right now, I think the three bromeliad layout is more attractive and lets the background and hardscape shine through a little better than when I previously had the five. So this is what we're rocking with now and uh, we still have to use moss and plants and see where it goes from here. All right, and my moss just came in this afternoon and uh, this is the number one question I get from anyone on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, anything is what type of moss you're using? Who do you get it from? Etc. Etc. So here you can see it's called low growing tropical moss. That's all I can really tell you guys. Um, the source that I use wants to remain nameless, so uh, I'm not going to reveal that to you guys, but um, it is my favorite moss. I, I use Rickia moss and Java moss, it's a little more uh, readily available. Um, I do also use um, a tropical liverwort, and this is from the same source um, as this low growing tropical moss. So um, as you can see, it's simple. You just put it into place and kind of pat it down. And um, I am also putting it on the, the wood section of this, this build. And normally I don't. I usually just use it on the terrestrial area. But I want to try growing it on the wood and see how it does. Um, I know it will grow well on the hydro lawn, but uh, I guess we'll find out here in a, a couple weeks. And once you've got all your moss in place, it's time to give it a good spray down. Uh, you just do want to spray it down really well. Um, this particular moss, like I said earlier, is very prone to drying out relatively quickly. So um, I do just make sure to spray everything down really good um, before we move on to the next step, which will be the types of leaf litter I'm going to be using and also seed and nut pods, which are really good for the uh, microfauna or do -do -do -do. Bioactive. The leaf litter I'm going to be using in this build is live oak and also dwarf southern magnolia. Uh, I recommend using multiple types of leaf litter, different sizes, shapes, whatever. I think it creates a more uh, natural look than just having one type of leaf. Um, and then also you see here I have a bag of mixed seed pods. Um, which are really good for microfauna, springtails, and isopods. They last a very long time inside the vivarium, and they also kind of break up the monotony of the live moss and leaf litter, and it creates an overall natural aesthetic. And all this stuff can be purchased from glassboxtropicals.com. Laying the leaf litter and seed pods down is as simple as just placing them in the viv in any way, shape, or pattern you'd like. Um, I just kind of go for... A random natural look if that makes any sense just do whatever you think looks good and stick with that here's a good look at what mine looks like uh, as you can see the multiple size and number of leaves the seed pods I think give an overall very natural aesthetic and now I'm going to plant some orchids and I'm going to show you how to mount them onto uh, in this scenario manzanita wood and similar to what I've been using all along I'm going to be using the Gorilla Glue Super Glue Gel. 
and it is completely safe for animals and plants so um, what you're going to do is put a little bit of the super glue gel down on the wood and then just press some of this or you could use sphagnum moss if you want um, I use the uh, natural moss here and um, just press it into the wood and next you're going to want to take the orchid out of the pot and remove all the sphagnum moss or substrate whatever it's in and then we're just going to apply a little bit of the super glue to the orchid um, you can put on the actual leaf the roots it does not matter and then just push it in and hold it and then as you're releasing kind of use your other fingers just in case the gloves get stuck to the super glue at all to kind of pry it off and i pretty much do the same step for the rest of the orchids so i'll just uh, quickly show you guys the names and how i do that I'm going to try and pronounce these orchids for you guys. First off, we have Pleurothallis berghamii. This is a new orchid for me. This is Masdevalia othello. And we have Pleurothallis areldii. This is Dryadella cristata. And here we have Pleurothallis prolifera. And Pleurothallis polysticta and Restrepia trichoglossa. And moving on to the vines, we have Margravia umbellata red, Margravia small round, regular Margravia umbellata. This is uh, just to show you what having it in different light does to the plant. This is Margravia centenesi. It's kind of like the King Margravia. This is Margravia rectiflora. This is Peperomia amarginella. It's actually one of my favorite plants. This is Peperomia natida. Here we have Peperomia serpens in the large form. This is Peperomia serpens in the small form. This is a philodendron species from Peru. It's a shingler. This is philodendron varicosum. And this is dwarf African violet.
Hi to the friendos. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, I had a blast doing this build. I actually built this tank in the same time frame uh, for the Vivarium build off, so I kind of played along as well. Obviously I'm not entering into the contest, but this is the tank that I came up with in the same amount of time that um, when I announced it for you guys. So um, I hope you guys like what I created. Uh, I can't wait to see how it grows in. And um, yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. So until uh, next time, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram at Ufraga Histrionica Goldberg out.